Okay, we're live, James speaking. Uh, I got a really cool AI tool for you today. And it's especially important if you're a coach, consultant, speaker, you're creating video content, course content, tutorials, and you're trying to keep track of all of the great information that you run into on a daily basis and you're being or getting overwhelmed. Well, this is a particular tool and I'm gonna show it to you right now. I'm gonna go into a little bit of depth, but this tool is called, let me make sure I get the right place here so we can see it. This one is called, let me go back to the homepage here. This one is called uh, getrecall.ai. So it's called getrecall.ai. We're gonna go through this one and this does some really neat things with AI that make it incredibly easy to do. One, organize your content. Two, search the content that you're creating. And three, show the relationships or the links between all of the particular pieces of information that you have. So if you're doing kind of the routine that I'm doing now where you're going to check out all your YouTube videos in the morning, maybe you're going to check your email, maybe you're visiting websites, reading blog posts, downloading PDFs and things that you may have found from other people's sites or the people that you subscribe to, you're collecting a lot of information. And most people end up trying to figure out how the heck am I going to control this? And there's usually two or three kind of systems that you put in place to organize that. And that can be something like using folders in your email or tags or trying to organize stuff in your Gmail inbox or whatever tool that you're using. Uh, I know for me personally, I have five or 6,000 e emails in my inbox. I have folders, but it gets lost and who knows where it is. Some of the other things that people do is you'll see that people use a tool, for example, like Notion, which is meant to be a, a knowledge base archive. Some people use it personally and for their business. And you may find, for example, that you've, uh, you know, that you've got a place where you're keeping, you know, recently outed uh, docs, for example, uh, whether those are in a categories or a list, maybe it's a YouTube video, maybe it's a PDF, but you have to enter it here. And there's no real synopsis with it unless you use another tool to generate some kind of summary of it, which is something that I do on a regular basis and using a tool, for example, I've talked about before called GLASP, which is a free extension for Chrome, and it allows you to basically create a summary of a YouTube video. But if I create the summary, where do I put it? What do I do with it? Do I copy and paste it and put it into a document and then put it into Notion? And hopefully it's all there. That's a lot of extra work and a lot of times I find myself that I may do one thing one time, the next time I do it, it's too much of a hassle or it's not open, and I put it somewhere else and they're not connected with each other. And this isn't the worst part because even when you end up doing that and you get some kind of system or standard operating procedure in place for doing that, a lot of times it just becomes overwhelming and there's no connection between them. I'll give you an example. Right now, if I go take a look uh, in my project management tool, that is right here on my campus. And just to give you an idea of what's going on here, if you take a look at this, I've got 94 YouTube video ideas currently that are on the go. So I've got 94 here that are in a list. And if I can, I, you know, I might wanna be able to change that to a list view and go through them. That's kind of cool. And I, you know, I might wanna sort them by date or by title or tag, but I'm basically looking at a list. And if I need to drill down on any of these, I basically gotta click it read the documents, maybe any of the reference links and stuff that I put in there. Maybe it's a summary that I got from a YouTube video, but I got to put it in and there's no real connection between the two. And that's where a real interesting thing happens with this tool called getrecall.ai. Now, I'm not a, um, a trained education and educational instructor or professor or anything. So one of the terms that I've been learning about is something called a knowledge graph. And this Get Recall creates your own personal knowledge graph. And what a knowledge graph is similar to is I always think of it this way. When I go and research a topic for a course or a topic for an education business, I always try and pick one topic and then I'll maybe get 15 relevant categories. And then from each of those categories, I may have 25 or 30 kind of either questions, challenges or pieces that I need to create content for. So it's kind of like a hub and spoke, right? So I got 1, 15, 25, or whatever the number happens to be. But that information always comes from the, the basic beginning piece, which is the node, which is, um, you know, if it's, am I doing email marketing or AI tools? 
uh, or video tutorials or courses on how to play piano. There's kind of a node or a main piece and then off of that edge there's usually references to things like um, uh, you know like creates, uses, chooses, replaces. These are all connecting words that connect to other nodes. So it basically creates, this tool creates your own personal knowledge graph and what it does is it puts it into an interface like this, which is like a deck of cards or organized cards that give you an easy tagging system on the left hand side and it's a detailed place to keep track of all of the information that you are collecting on a regular basis. Now, I'm going to show you how it does this and this is a really important part. Adding all of these materials is done in a real simple way. Remember when I said like GLASP does YouTube videos and I may have to copy and paste something in the other tool? The way that Get Recall works, which makes it a lot easier to use, is in the upper right hand corner you can see that what there is here is an extension. So this works with a Chrome extension. And that means that anytime you're on a YouTube video or if you're on a blog post or if you're um, on a particular um, a, you know, a wiki page or something. You can just use that extension and it will summarize the piece that you are on. And I'll show you what that looks like. But the thing that I wanted to let you know is it's super easy to create these summaries to add it to your own personal uh, tool there. So you can create your own cards and the best thing is it actually gets tagged and organized for you. You can adjust it of course, but it'll do that for you. So here's a, here's a cool part. I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, well, what can I add? News articles, PDFs, YouTube videos, podcasts, blog posts, Wikipedia as example. And the first part is, is it allows you to summarize those. And when you summarize it, it does a really great job of summarizing it. And let me show you an example of what happens. I did a couple just so that you can see where they are. And here's the first one here. I was on one of my own videos. I was looking at my own video and I said, hey, I wonder what the summary is if I actually go and put this together. And I have it marked here in the upper right hand corner. See my mouse? It's got detailed and concise. I've got it on detailed. And all that I did is I clicked the summary button and this panel shows up on the right hand side and it gives me a super, super detailed uh, summary of this particular video. And it does this for any of those pieces that you're actually inputting, like PDFs, like web pages, like blog posts, like podcasts these things automatically get created and they are very detailed. Um, so that's the first part. Second part is, is if you take a look through these, and again, maybe I'll see if I can get this a little bit bigger so you can see it. But on the right hand side, you'll see that there are actually links to some of the reference uh, websites and additional material that are directly right within the summary. So there's, I mentioned Udemy, for example, completion rates, and it gave me some stats on completion rates. If I go through as well, you'll see there's uh, things for websites, but also content creation. What is it? What's the definition? Um, so it's got a lot of detail in it and it's got references in it. The other thing I want you to take a look at is if you hold my mouse over it there, it also has timestamps on the actual summary. So if you wanted to go and find out it's talking about this bullet point, you can click the link to it and be brought to it in the actual video. So those are some really cool things in the summary and there's even one more that I really like and that one is if I am looking somewhere in this particular summary I can add my own notes in the summary. So if I add my own notes I've got a little bit of an editor here I can underline it put ever what I want here and have that now as a summary for this video. Here's two things you have to think about when you're here because this is where the magic happens. When I look at this in the upper right hand corner as well, you see there's the double, looks like the copy one. It says copy as markdown. Now, if you're not familiar with markdown, I've covered this in a number of other videos. It is a, a type of a formatting of a text file that uh, basically denotes this is a title, this is a subhead, and it basically allows you to structure the information. The reason markdown is so cool is for me is because most of the mind mapping tools that I use like XMind can import markdown files as a mind map. 
So we get an easy way to export any of the summaries directly to, the, to a mind map, which is cool. Here's the other one, and this is where the magic starts happening. If I go and take a look, there's an open an app in the far right, it's the box with the arrow on it. If I click on this, it automatically gets added to my own personal knowledge graph. And in fact, that's where it is. It gets added here. So I now have on the left hand side, it automatically created one called education for me. And it has the video here. And if I open it up, there's the video. And I can now look at this and I've got the summary that's here as well. The other thing you'll notice is remember I made a change on the summary on the website. If you look right here, I typed add notes and I put a bold underline on it. It automatically updated it here in my knowledge graph. So anything that I change, shows up in both places. You can see that I've got the timestamps here, the links are all available for me here. So this is just a great way to have super summaries. And here's the other cool part. Remember I said you were talking about being able to summarize it? This is the one that is important for us because if we have all of the information that we're referencing and collecting, we can use this to connect all of the pieces together. Remember I talked about having that node and, and, um, uh, and the edges and how they connect together? This is exactly what happens when you are creating or capturing these, it allows you to do that. So let me give you an example of how that works. So here's one here, I'm looking at what I saved as a document, and in the upper right hand corner, you see there's that little kind of hub and spoke or little star. If I go and click that, it will open up the graph view. And when I have the graph view, I now have all of the links to different pieces that are here and also the places where there's references to it in other sections. So if I go and click so more, I can now start to see how those are all interconnected. And at any time I can go and pick on it and see what it has and what it's referenced to. So this is a really cool way to organize your content and not only know that you have it, organized and you've got a great detail on it, you can now start playing around and see how is all of this stuff connected. So here's one I had a YouTube document, for example, open it up. There's the information that was in um, a transcript. Again, I can open that one up and go back and see where it is and start expanding it and showing more on how all of these pieces are put together from this one document. The other thing I can do, of course, is if I put it together, and use all of the documents, I can start seeing how everything is organized here as well. So this is a real cool tool, one that if you're serious about trying to organize all of this and keep track of it, you're now able to do that quickly and easily. So this one is called uh, getrecall.ai. Uh, they do have a free version, go around, play with it. I think you're gonna be surprised how easy it is to add stuff, and I think what I'll do is just to do that, just because uh, we're here right now, I'll do a manual one. Um, I added these ones that are all here. And you can see some of them have like tags here, some of them, uh, you know, education, e-learning, business. If I wanna sort all of them or choose the ones that show up and don't show up, I can certainly do that uh, as well for groups and tags. So they either are available or not available. And here's the other one that's kind of two. So I can filter them this way, but if I go on new in the upper right hand corner, I don't have to use that extension in the browser. The other thing I can do is just put a URL in. So YouTube videos, website, articles, blogs, online PDFs, Google Docs, Google Slides are all available here. All I have to do is put the URL in. I can actually search like uh, Wikipedia, Google, uh, the work knowledge graph from Google, Wikidata. If I wanna upload any documents like PDFs, for example, which I did, you put them in. Bookmarks, if I have bookmarks already in my browser, I can add those ones and I can get it to do a concise or detailed summary based on that. So I can add as many cards as I want with a lot of different opportunities for organizing them automatically, but more importantly, connecting the dots and trying to get these pieces all together. So I think this one's really cool. Um, I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more. For me personally, I've just been doing it today. Is it perfect for everyone? No, if you collect a lot of data and you don't have a system to do that, it might be a place to start, not only just to kind of learn how they all connected, but I think more importantly is getting to the habit of collecting your information and having it in a place that you can repurpose it 
for the content, for your courses, for the material that you're trying to create. So um, play around with it, hope you like it. If you wanna see more videos like this, of course, make sure to visit trainingsites.io forward slash join. That's my campus where I create all of the courses that I have, all of the materials, prompts, all of the tools for anyone who's interested in starting, building, growing education business. Love to have you there, uh, it's free. And uh, also like and subscribe to the channel on YouTube here. I do one or two videos every day just sharing stuff that I run into or that I'm using or have researched when it comes to creating and selling courses online. So I'd uh, love to have you for the next video. Take care, expect the best.